Welcome to the 1st Cavalry Division Heritage Hall. On display is a brief history of the nation's only cavalry division. From horseback to helicopters, sabers to tanks, the 1st Cavalry Division has been on point for the nation for over 100 years. We invite you to begin your tour in the center of the hall at the display of Corporal Tiber Ted Rubin's Medal of Honor. Corporal Rubin is one of our division's 44 Medal of Honor recipients. His citation reads, At this time, we invite you to move to the horse on the left-hand side of the display. From here, we will guide you from left to right through the combat history of your division. Born in 1921 as a horse-mounted cavalry division, the unit was formed by consolidating a number of historic horse cavalry regiments and horse-drawn artillery, horse-mounted engineers, and logistics units under one command, the 1st Cavalry Division. Displayed on the wall is a brief history of the division, its regiments, and their assigned locations from 1921 to 1941. Additionally, you will see a picture of the division in 1940 taken at Fort Bliss, Texas in its original horse-mounted formation. Trigger was purchased in 1989 by the division as a morale booster and symbol of our roots. Trigger received his name from the division's honor guard and reminds today's first Cav troopers of their proud lineage. For over 3,000 years, the horse was the combat arm of decision in the combined arms team. At the decisive point in the battle when the commander felt the infantry and artillery had set conditions for victory, the cavalry would be unleashed to exploit success, pursue the enemy relentlessly, and win the battle decisively. The advent of the combustible engine, the rapid fire of machine guns, and advances in artillery saw a diminishing role for the horse on the modern battlefield. Between World War I and World War II, armies around the world experimented with horse mechanization mixed formations. The 1st Cavalry Division played a vital role in this evolution. 
1939, the German Blitzkrieg changed warfare forever. The tank and motorized infantry had replaced the horse as the combat armor decision on the battlefield. Entering World War II in 1941, horse regiments of the U.S. Army would retire their loyal and trusty mounts for iron ponies, but the spirit of the cavalry remains and is captured in the mindset of all mounted warriors in the 1st Cavalry Division. Trigger represents the calves' past, present, and future. He represents freedom, which is what all troopers past and present fight for. He represents all troopers who have ridden in a saddle for our nation and symbolizes the spirit of the calf. Trigger is outfitted with a model 1885 McClellan riding saddle that was handmade by cavalry troopers in our division's horse cavalry detachment at our on-site leather shop maintained at the horse cavalry detachment stables. We invite you to visit the horse cavalry detachment located behind the National Mounted Warfare Museum just behind the Welcome Center off post. This detachment is manned by approximately 40 troopers from the division who train mounted on horseback with the Colt Single Action Army Revolver, Springfield Model 1873 Carbine Rifle, and Model 1860 Light Cavalry Sabre. These troopers train with and care for 33 horses and 4 mules which pull a Model 1878 Supply Wagon and man an M1841 Light Mountain Howitzer. Along with Trigger, these horses and troopers preserve our division's history. From here, let us walk you through the history of the nation's only cavalry division, its adaptations to maintain the spirit of the calf, an essential quality to win decisively on the battlefield of yesteryear, today, and into the future. Let's begin. Next to Trigger is a trooper from the 1st Cavalry Division from the 1920s. In 1921, the 1st Cavalry Division was formally organized as a horse-mounted division at Fort Bliss, Texas, consisting of two cavalry brigades, a field artillery battalion, an engineer battalion, Division Quartermaster Trains Command, Special Troops Command, an ambulance company, and a headquarters element. The original division was manned by 7,463 troopers. Our early duties included patrolling the nation's borders and training to be ready to fight and win our nation's wars. This trooper of the 5th Cavalry Regiment is wearing the uniform of the 1st Cavalry Division troopers when it was constituted in 1921. They would have been armed with the M1911 45 caliber automatic pistol, an M1913 cavalry saber, also known as the patent saber, the last cavalry saber issued to the United States Army. He would have mastered horsemanship and was ready to fight and went on horseback. If you would please move to the next display. The 1930s saw experimentation with mechanization and was a period of major modernization, much like what we see today with multi-domain operations and advances in cyber and space and their application on today's battlefield. During the interwar period of the 1920s and 30s, the 1st Cavalry Division was on the forefront of this experimentation with mechanized forces. However, at the beginning of World War II, the 1st Cavalry Division was still a horse-centric division. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the division was called into combat. While most cavalry units turned in their horses for scout cars, half-tracks, and tanks to fight the Germans in North Africa and Europe, the 1st Cavalry Division turned in its horses and deployed as dismounted cavalry, fighting as infantry against the Japanese Empire in the Pacific Theater and earning four campaign streamers which adorned the division colors. This World War trooper to your front is a properly outfitted trooper of the 12th Cavalry Regiment during World War II. He is dressed in the HBT uniform worn by troops in the Pacific Theater. His weapon would have been an M1 Grand 30 caliber rifle. First Cav played a vital role in our victory over Japan, and during our baptism by fire, the division earned its nickname, the First Team, as it was the first in the Manila and the first in the Tokyo. Following VJ Day, the division served as an occupation force in Japan until 1950, when war in the Pacific broke out again as North Korea invaded South Korea and the 1st Cavalry Division was called on once again to combat. Please move to the next display. The trooper to your front represents a trooper of the 8th Cavalry Regiment. He would have carried the M1 30 caliber carbine and wears the uniform of a 1950s trooper from the Korean War. 
1950, the first team deployed to South Korea in reaction to the North Korean invasion of the South. The first cavalry division stormed ashore at Pohangdong, South Korea, in the war's first amphibious landing. By July of 1950, the division began offensive operations to the north and crossed the 38th parallel on 9 October 1950. Closing on North Korea's capital 10 days later, the first team marked another first being the first into Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. The division fought for 18 months of continuous combat operations in Korea, earning seven additional campaign streamers. From 1944 to 1965, the 1st Cavalry Division had been forward deployed outside the U.S. and conducted continuous operations in the Pacific and Asia for 21 years. Please move to the next trooper on display. The division returned to the U.S. briefly in 1965, restationed to Fort Benning, Georgia, and reorganized for new missions in Southeast Asia. The battlefield in Vietnam needed a new horse to provide them mobility required to win and maneuver warfare. This new pony came in the form of the helicopter to allow the cavalry to maneuver quickly in the jungle environment while keeping the spirit of the CAV. The 1st Cav became the Army's first air mobile division, and within 90 days, the first team was back in combat in Asia as the first fully committed division of the Vietnam War. The division's baptism by fire as Air Cav came when elements of the division conducted an air mobile insertion into an obscure valley in Vietnam called the Ia Drong. This was the first major test of air mobile units in combat and validated the techniques of air mobile operations, the trademark of the first team in Vietnam. From the Ia Drong Valley to Quezon and onward to deep attacks in Cambodia, the 1st Cavalry Division's air mobile concept was battle tested and recognized as an invaluable tactic on today's modern battlefield. The division departed Vietnam after five years of combat with 13 additional campaign streamers and a presidential unit citation. This Sky Trooper, a member of the 7th Cavalry Regiment, is complete with jungle fatigues and an M16 rifle. After Vietnam, the division redeployed to its new home at Fort Hood, Texas, where it would become an armored division receiving the first M1 tanks and new Apache helicopters and playing a critical role in helping to win the Cold War against the Soviet Union by being part of the best manned, trained, and equipped army in the world. Trained and prepared to defend against Soviet aggression, this cohesive team of fit, disciplined, well-trained troopers would be called on once again into combat. Please move to the next trooper to your right. Having become the premier armor division in the United States Army, the first team was called again into action when the United States led the international community in protecting Saudi Arabia and liberating Kuwait from Saddam Hussein's aggression. Deploying to Southwest Asia as part of a multinational force participating in Operation Desert Shield in August 1990, President George H.W. Bush, with the backing of United Nations Security Council Resolution 678, delivered an ultimatum to Iraq get out of Kuwait or suffer the consequences. Iraq refused to free Kuwait, resulting in a coalition offensive operation to liberate the Kuwaiti people. On February 26, 1991, the coalition initiated combat operations against the Iraqi army. The commander of Allied forces, General Norman Schwarzkopf, directed, send in the first team, destroy the Republican Guard, we're going home. The first team attacked with lightning speed, 100 miles deep into enemy territory, identifying and destroying Iraqi defensive positions and equipment. Pausing only to refuel, the 1st Cavalry Division charged through the enemy's defensives, slicing deep into Iraq's rear area, 200 miles deep in just 24 hours, again victorious and earning an additional two campaign streamers. The Gulf War also marks another first for our division as the first female troopers participated in combat roles during operations. The trooper from the 1st Cavalry Division Sustainment Brigade is in desert camouflage uniform, worn during Operation Desert Storm, and would have been equipped with the M9 pistol and M16 rifle. Once we returned from the desert, the division continued to train for our wartime mission until America's first team was called back into action in April 1998 this time to serve as peacekeepers in Bosnia. Once deployed to Bosnia, our mission was to enforce the Dayton Peace Accord. 
The missions performed by CAF troopers included security patrols, weapon storage site inspections, acting as mediators, and providing force protection. This trooper from the 8th Engineer Battalion, one of the original units of the division when it was constituted in 1921, is wearing the standard battle dress uniform and gear worn during the division's participation in stabilization force mission in Bosnia. Please transition to the next trooper. September 11, 2001. Terrorists attacked the United States. The first team answered the call of President George W. Bush to be ready. From the beginning of the global war on terrorism, the 1st Cavalry Division and its brigades continued the tradition of service by deploying six times to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. In January 2004, the entire division deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The deployment would include securing Baghdad, engaging Al-Qaeda and insurgent forces, facilitating the first free elections in Iraq, and providing training to the new Iraqi security forces. In June 2006, the division returned to Baghdad and participated in the Iraq surge strategy and at one point had six combat brigades under its command. The division headquarters, along with the attached brigades, significantly reduced sectarian violence and thwarted the designs of Al-Qaeda to throw Iraq into a sectarian civil war. After a brief refit, the headquarters deployed again to Iraq in 2009 to 2010. During this deployment, the first team transitioned authority of all operations to the Iraqi government, thus signifying the end of Operation Iraqi Freedom, earning five additional campaign streamers and numerous unit awards. In May 2011, the 1st Cavalry Division became the first heavy U.S. Army Division headquarters to deploy to Afghanistan. America's first team assumed responsibilities of regional command east and conducted full-spectrum operations throughout 14 provinces. In June of 2014, the division headquarters deployed a second time to Afghanistan to assume command of Regional Command South in Kandahar, Afghanistan. In September of 2016, the division headquarters deployed a third time to Afghanistan to assume command of the United States National Support Element in Bagram, Afghanistan. The captain to your front is a member of the 82nd Field Artillery Regiment and is wearing the digital pattern Army combat uniform worn in Iraq and Afghanistan by members of the 1st Cav. He is equipped with the M4 carbine rifle. The command sergeant major to your front is a member of the 9th Cavalry Regiment. He is in today's Army combat uniform, the OCP, which was worn by troopers during operations in Afghanistan, Korea, Europe, and the Middle East and is the duty uniform of today's 1st Cavalry Division Trooper. He wears a Stetson, the symbol of the cavalry. He is wearing his spurs, earned during his unit's spur ride, where he had to demonstrate expertise as a soldier and mastery of his basic soldier skills. And he is wearing the NCO sword, a symbol of his responsibility to enforce standards and disciplines as the backbone of the 1st Cavalry Division. As he looks across the hall to Trigger and his predecessor in 1921, he never forgets what he represents, who came before him, and the sacrifices of those who rode before him. As he looks up to the 47 campaign streamers and unit awards, he is reminded of the legacy he has been entrusted to uphold. As he looks to the big yellow patch of the first team, that iconic Norman shield, he can never forget that like the Roman legions, in battle you may drop your sword, but you can never drop your shield that protects the trooper by your side. He is living the legend of the first team. This concludes the indoor tour of the 1st Cavalry Division history. We invite you to take a walking tour around the division headquarters to observe the displays of the equipment used by the division throughout its first century of service to the nation and see the monuments dedicated to service and sacrifices of those who rode before us in the first team. A map to guide you on a walking tour to observe the tanks, helicopters, howitzers, and monuments can be found at the desk when you enter Heritage Hall. First team, live the legend. We are the Cav, courageous, audacious, and victorious. <laughs>